श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम इन एवरी फील्ड एक्सपर्टाइज इज अचीव्ड आफ्टर ए लॉन्ग प्रैक्टिस वेदर इट इज ड्राइविंग ए कार और कुकिंग द फूड when initially the girls start learning how to cook they are all the time reading in the book and seeing how many spoons what is the sequence but once they start cooking then they don't require anything they'll be scolding here and there and with their hand rather that they are and yet the food will be wonderful because they expertise <coughs> if this example is clear the same thing is meditation we have to practice only one thing because what is meditation meditation is the divine expresses through us that is meditation and what is the expression of the divine divine is unopposed to anything now let us start analyzing this statement the truth the god bhagwan brahma is unopposed to anything like the space supports all the forms all the shapes this space is unopposed to any shape or any form i am taking you straight away to yourself be very attentive <coughs> then from the space the object we come to the subject so what is the object of the space <coughs> sound now the sound is heard by who by the ears now ears are unopposed to any sound whether it is the chanting of the lord's name the same ears here where it is the humming sound of the um ac the same ears here because the truth is unopposed now come from the this is one example of one organ now take any organ colors and forms are supported by the vision vision is unopposed to any color or any form not only unopposed but doesn't get attached to anything when i am seeing the green color and then the red color and then the blue color my vision is not against any color at the same time it is not attached clinical here you don't have to learn anything only recognize is called as pratyavidya pratyavidya is recognition see now similarly go further the mind we all have the only problem is the mind the swami ji very well as it for meditation two minute thoughts come what should i do common sense only can help you nobody can help you what is the common sense now tell me if you go to the ophthalmologist and tell him doctor i can see everything with my eyes then why you have come seeing by the eyes is not a problem not seeing is a problem similarly we go to the ent person and he also we tell then i can hear everything perfectly well this is good now come to the mind 
there are too many thoughts in the mind. Now tell me, where the thought should come? In the nose. So you can blow it out. The thoughts have to come only in the mind. But our meditation is what? I want to keep my eyes open, but I should not see anything. That is our meditation. No. If you don't want to see anything, close your eyes. Over. Why struggle? Similarly, if you don't want thoughts, go to sleep. No, I don't want to sleep also. <clears throat> I don't want to participate in the world also. And I should not have thoughts. Our struggle of controlling the mind, you know, is like what? <clears throat> There was a student in a school and he entered the laboratory and he recently read that mercury is a liquid metal. So he could not imagine how can the metal be liquid. So he went all alone without the knowledge of the teacher and lifted the bottle of the mercury and it is very heavy and it slipped from his hand fell on the floor, so the mercury spilled. Then he wanted to put it back into another container. So he collected all the mercury with his palm and then tried to lift it with the hand and put it in the container. Lift it in the hand, with the hand. It can never do that. Exactly the same way. Our struggle to control the mind is like this. <coughs> then what is to be done? Now start learning from your own experiences. For that we have to know what is the anatomy of thought. What is the thought? Mind plus anything to which we give importance. These two things put together is a thought. Now for example, I say cow, so your mind has taken the shape of the cow. I take the name of somebody, let us say uh, Dhruva. The moment I say Dhruva, immediately different thoughts will start coming. If he is a devotee, he will think about Dhruva from Bhagavat Mahapuran. If it is the mother of the child whose name is Dhruva, the moment I say Dhruva, she will remember him. So the world enters our mind through the sense organs. So there are two ways the thoughts are produced. One way the world enters through the sense organs and the second way there are already a lot of storage of things in our mind in the form of memory. These are the two things. And the best part is, both of them, the thoughts gathered through the sense organs or the thoughts which are in the form of the memory, both of them are eliminated by the same principle. Now what happens? We get carried away by the thoughts. And as a result, the mind supporting the thoughts is never recognized. See, friends, how we go away from ourselves? Meditation is to be, samsara is to become. We become somebody. Then only the thoughts come. Like you, uh, you become somebody. Oh, I have to go and do that job. You have become somebody. Then the thoughts will come about that thoughts, about that theme. Therefore, yesterday I told you, when you sit for meditation, following steps must be strictly followed. Number one, we must be happy and cheerful. Number two, we are not going to get anything. 
it is a bargain of total loss. Not going to get anything. When the waves arise in the ocean, is it an addition to the ocean? When the waves disappear, is it a loss to the ocean? Again, apply it subjectively. When I see you sitting here, is it an addition to my vision? And if you all disappear, is it a loss? Think. So, we are cheerful, happy, and we are not going to get anything. There is a third important thing. Many students get into some kind of fear when they sit for meditation. And the fear is in the form of they will start cracking their joints. Nowhere that uh, instruction is given. Crack your joints. Cut, 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 cut. Nobody tells us. We do that. This fear thing, as I understood, is somebody asked me. Swamiji, whenever I sit for meditation, I always have that fear that when I sit for meditation, suppose I start levitating, levitating, what will happen? I said, that depends where you are sitting. If you are sitting below the fan and the fan is on, and you start levitating, go in a particular level and <laughs> Or if you are below the sky, you will go up in the heavens. Why these things come? Only imagination. Meditation is levitating. See? Nothing is going to happen. Then to remove this fear, we have to insist that in my heart is my beloved Lord and my Guru Maharaj who is protecting and guiding me from within. So we are not alone. Somebody is taking care of us. Then next step. We have to learn to remain in the utter present. Meditation is living in utter present. Now this is done how it is possible. So then find out. If I am sitting as a husband for meditation, what will be my Ishta Devata? Belan Devi. Because I am a husband. If I am sitting as a mother, the Ishta Devata will be children. So, don't remain anybody. And how not to remain anybody? Do not bring any of your past, good or bad, in the present. This will be easy through wisdom, not through struggle. What is the wisdom? Wisdom is very simple. Do we have a choice to live yesterday or tomorrow? We have no choice. So to remain in the present is natural. Getting lost in the past memories and future worries is unnatural. And whenever we are unnatural, we suffer. Like you are sitting naturally like this. Suppose you are asked to sit. Sit in Shirshasan. Most unnatural. You suffer. See friends. Therefore, to remain in the present is a natural state.
slowly slowly you will get the stage don't expect things to happen overnight so we remain in the present and for that we don't bring our past in the present therefore we do not become anybody as a person sitting on the seat of meditation don't become anybody now the next step these are all psychological adjustments next step do not plan anything what you will do after meditation suppose you plan okay swami is coming for breakfast i think i should make uh, upma for him but i don't know whether he takes onion or not and garlic or not whether he takes chilies or not you know i don't know how much salt he takes anyway i'll keep it every ready and then when he comes i'll prepare upma for him so whole meditation will be cutting the onion think don't plan anything what you are going to do after meditation see so by this what is happening just watch it we have blocked the past by remaining as exactly in the present the past is blocked then future is blocked by not planning anything what we are going to do after meditation be attentive mind cannot survive in the utter present mind dissolves in consciousness if it is not allowed to go in the past and the future but initially because of the old habit and practice the mind will go in the past oh when we went for that meditation that vipassana camp you know they were telling but he is telling something different there they have told this thing you know ko 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 bilkul clear don't bring anything of your past at this moment now to practice this while we are sitting on the seat of meditation how do we practice it when we are living with the world there is only one way and i'll tell you that and i also guarantee you you will never do it because it is very simple if i tell you something complicated you will do it suppose i tell you stand in the cold waters of ganges um, up to chest deep and raise your hand up and then do the gayatri mantra 2400000 times om bhur bhu sahat sridur varanyam bhargo you will do it i no doubt about it but if i am telling you now something i guarantee you will not do it what is that do not talk about your past past means this moment before and these things we have to learn in our day to day experiences what i am telling you is not from the books learn it learn it how i learned this the mind disappears in the utter present how i learned it there are two things when you learn from your experience it is not a burden on your mind it is a wisdom 
when you don't learn from your experiences, it is an impression, it is a burden. Like in our childhood, we are touched sometime in the fire and we got burnt. We have learned that a fire burns. Therefore, toward the fire, we have no likes and no dislikes. See? But if something, somebody has said something to us in our childhood, because we were very naughty, and therefore we were very angry, and when you grow up, that still remains in your whole life. The childhood, hatred or love, remains throughout life. Because we have not learned, we have reacted. So whenever we learn, we will be growing wise. So, how do you learn from your experiences? One example I'll give you. There was one gentleman in a train when I was traveling and he wanted to talk to me and I don't like to talk to people. So he uh, said, Swamiji, I am happy now we are going together. So. Um, uh, now, next 18 hours I will have good company. I said, my God, this fellow is going to eat my head now. That's the reason I don't take anybody in my vehicle when I go. They don't allow you to leave. So what I did, um, I told him, I said, look here, my guru told me, whenever you travel, to keep on chanting Lord's name. So I have to follow my guru's instruction. Therefore, I will not talk. And then, um, then I, I, I want to tell you something. And you tell, I have no problem. And he started telling. Blah, 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 blah. I was here, I was here. I had done this thing. I no end to it. And finally, we came to USA. USA means Ullas Nagar Sindhi Association. <laughs> And there I had a shop and everything and then my children were grown up and then they told me, Dad, you go to Delhi, it is very humid here, therefore you are having asthma and therefore they put me in this uh, train. <clears throat> then I said, hmm, then what happened? Then I met you, oh wonderful, then what happened? The moment you come in the present, you have nothing to talk. Observe this. Whenever we talk to others, we talk about our past and nothing else. And therefore, the mind survives on the carbohydrates of the past memories. When we remain as absolutely in the present, mind starts dissolving in the consciousness like an ice cube in the waters. I have told you the same thing in two different ways. Yesterday I told you, don't talk to yourself, meaning no thoughts are erupting. When no thoughts are erupting, you don't go in the past memories. Impact is the same. Normally what happens, when we are having too many thoughts, we get disturbed and then we complain about the mind. Complaining about the mind is not the way to lead a spiritual life. On the contrary, 
A seeker should never, never adapt to complaining. Zero complaints. No complaints. And the second thing, never talk about the past. Now, why is this so much insistence of not talking about the past? Again, learn. I am not telling you something as the Ayurvedic medicine to gulp compulsorily bitter one. No. Accept it if it clicks you. When we talk about our past, now tell me, past belongs to whom? To the body or to us? Body was born. We were never born. Body was a child. We were never a child. Body became teenager. We were never a teenager. Body became the middle age. We never became middle age. Body became old. Therefore, old people have this pathetic joke. Can you guess what is my age? And you tell that old man, Oh, uncle, you are 16 years young. How do you imagine that? No, I am 84. Oh, 84 is body man. You are neither born nor you grow. Observe this. So when we talk about our past, unknowingly what is happening? Our body identification is becoming stronger and stronger. See? It's very important. Don't talk about your past. And don't ask anybody about their past. When slowly we start practicing this in our day-to-day -day life, the net result is our mind is at peace. Like we learn driving a car not directly on the express highway. We go on a football ground and learn there. And initially, while driving the car on a football ground, there also we discover a tree and go and hit it there. That is our expertise. In this kind of ability, can we drive on the highways? No. Exactly the same. Be very attentive. When we are conducting ourselves in this world, that is like uh, learning to drive a car on a football ground. Our whole day is lived on a war, war, war attitude, fighting with this, fighting with frustration, anger, and then we want to sit meditation. What meditation it will be? There are two stages through which meditation goes. Number one is called a drashta. When we move in this world, don't react. No reaction. No reaction. Then after that drashta is practiced, then you come to the subjective. What is subjective? I am not telling you witnessing consciousness. I am not in favor of that. Many people must have heard this word. Sakshi Bhav. I struggled out of that. Therefore, I am telling you. Don't struggle with the Sakshi Sakshi. Then, learn to remain indifferent. Now, what is the difference between a witnessing consciousness and indifference? Udasina. Like, I am watching all of you here sitting and I am watching every one of you. 
and yet I am not getting disturbed. That is Sakshi Bhav. And second thing, what is being indifferent? I don't even recognize your presence. So whether you sit or you go away, whether you are sitting or sleeping, whether you understand or don't understand, whether you are interested or not interested, nothing disturbs me. Because I am indifferent. Observe this. When you are practicing Sakshi, witnessing consciousness, you give importance and validity to the objective world. And when you remain indifferent, like what? Like we are indifferent to the rainbow. We are indifferent to the mirage waters. So when we are indifferent means what? Presence and absence of the mirage waters has no consequence to us. And in that, we have no struggle. In witnessing consciousness, there is a struggle. See, friends, so when we are thus living in this world, let us not get involved with anybody or anything beyond limits. Bhagavan Shankaracharya says, Shatro Mitre Putre Bandho Makuru Yatnam Vigraha Sandho. Don't create friends and enemies. Nears and dears, nobody around. See? Like I keep on moving everywhere. Same question is asked by everybody, by the Grastas as well as the Mahatmas. Once I was in some place, I won't tell you the name, very great Mahatma. Greatness because he has got many huge ashrams. Great because he has got millions of followers. Great because he earns in millions per month or per day. Therefore, great. See? That is the height of dispassion. When you have got many, many ashrams, you are most dispassionate. So that kind. So he asked me, How many, when you go around everywhere, who goes with you? Because when these people go, they have got a secretary and president and treasurer and somebody, a cook and a puja and a poti. The whole retinue goes. So who goes with you? I said, I am very clear about it. There is nobody who can hang around me. No hang-ups. And once you take this, that meditation is a path by the one to the one, all alone, without feeling lonely in life. Follow that. So, after this psychological adjustment is made, then you are sitting quiet and don't bother to sit in a particular posture. Whatever is convenient, comfortable for you, sit in that posture. Patanjali Maharshi says, what is asan? Sthira Sukham Asanam. Sthira Sukham. Sukham is bliss. Asthira is steady. Steady bliss is asan. Nowhere it is said, Ushtrasan and Makarasan and uh, Macharasan and all kinds of animal asan. No. We should be blissfully steady and steadily blissful. 
otherwise we sit in a very funny posture because we are seen on the tv or somebody tells and day after some time pain here pain there and only one condition when it is over oh god i have to open up my legs who told you to do that see i have gone to many yoga institutions and i feel so but if that is god's will he love i should i feel bad about it in one place i went i'll not tell you the names and places so they were having the meditation class after the meditation was my lecture so they say somebody if you want to come you can come for meditation i said okay i'll come i had to time pass somehow because after that there only was my lecture so or uh, if the mahatma ji was sitting and uh, others was, i also sat in between no no you come and sit uh, you know on the bigger seat no i am okay here and then he said now whichever station you are yama niyama asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan samadhi according to that start your meditation when i ring the bell the bell which we use for bhagwan here tang 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 he took out a bell from his pocket he said i will ring the bell tang 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 start meditation and continue doing meditation till i ring the bell again then the meditation is over so everybody was sitting and the ganti tang 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 now what will be meditation next ganti kab hoti hai these are all cartoons of meditation it is not a military drill by the left quick march no we have to live in meditation 24/7 otherwise normally what happens half an hour meditation after hour frustration a why frustration even during meditation they are frustrated because their meditation is only matter oriented not parmatma oriented see where there is prakriti vikruti will be there you cannot st- stop vikruti in the prakriti whatever you may do you are bound to become old you may do all makeup to cover the breakup but it will be happening but you will see most of the yoga people what they tell oh if you do yoga pranayam you will uh, be healthy and you will live long what will you do by living long tell me you are those people who are 90 95 what is the use neither for themselves nor for others long life and health is a by product of yoga abhyas like we don't keep the cow for cow dung and gomutra we keep the cow for milk and cow dung and gomutra comes free exactly the same way this process of meditation is for higher purpose and health and everything is a secondary thing so after we have understood this basics now we go still deeper one experiment i will tell you what i conducted and it will help you one of my friend asked me once in delhi he is a great police officer and he asked samidi uh, please give me some uh, homework for next one year so i'll practice it so it was about 8 9 o'clock he stood in my door in my room i said are you ready he said yes i said close the door he closed the door then i said now switch off the lights he switch off the light he said now start answering my question thoughtfully not mechanically yes what do you see 
He said, nothing, darkness. I said, think twice. Yes, Swamiji, other than darkness, I don't see anything. I said, first error. Eyes cannot see darkness. Eyes can see only the light. Okay. Next. I said, now switch on the light. He switched on. And now what do you see? He said, all the things in this room. I said, name them. I am seeing you, the table, and your shoes, and the water bottle, and the bed, and the AC, the fan. I said, go ahead. He said, all these things. Anything more? He said, no, nothing more. I said, think again. He said, if you want, I can tell each and every small little thing. I said, whatever you do, think twice before it's complete. No, this is all I see. I said, again, you are incomplete. Are you not seeing the light? Oh God, I, yes, I am seeing the light. I said, now go further. What more you can see? Mami, this is too much now. I want nothing more than this thing. I said, come on, think twice. He said, no. I said, I am seeing something more. Now, what are you seeing? I am seeing electricity. I said, now from this experiment, learn. When we are preoccupied with the objects, we don't recognize the sense organs. So, objects cover the sense organs. Whenever we give importance to the worldly things, we go to the periphery of our personality. And what is our whole life? Only talking about these possessions and relations. So we are far away from the center. Because we have given importance to the worldly objects. Now next step. Get it very clearly. When we are around 40, 45, our eyes start giving trouble. So, we start reading initially without any glass we have got. So, we take the book in our hand and start reading in a different way like this. And the children at home, they start making fun. Mommy, these days you are becoming very stylish. No, beta, I can't see properly. Now, where is the attention? Attention is not on the object. Attention is on the ability of the vision, is it not? So, what is happening? Objects are covering the sense organs. And then again we get the glasses and after getting the glasses, again we get lost in the world. Just recognize this step by step understanding of our life. So objects overpower us, as a result sense organs are covered. Then second step, we are slaves to our sense organs. Unless I get a particular type of achar, a particular type of pakoda, I won't take food. If I am a Andhra, I want gongura. Without gongura, I cannot eat. So I have become a slave to the sense organs. Now sense organs are what? Sense organs are nothing but the mind coming out of the holes. So, mind comes out of the eyes is called as the vision. Mind coming out of the tongue is called as rasana. Mind coming out of the ear is called a hearing ability. And when we are slaves to our sense organs, we are covering the mind. 
and if we don't get our desire fulfilled at the sense organ level then we become emotional and emotional people are constantly seeking attention see and therefore old people are constantly seeking attention and therefore what day i went to somebody's house he was sitting alone and it was my mistake i spoke to that person i said babu ji how are you swami ji jinda hai abhi to that means now frustration is developing de na sir khana kha liya jab de dete hai tab kha lete hai you can see the height of frustration because that fellow must not be getting attention in the house and therefore frustration comes so we are slaves of our mind and when we become emotionally overpowered our discrimination intellect is covered now see how this step by step you understand objects are covering sense organs sense organs are covering mind mind is covering intellect an emotional person cannot have the discrimination proper i'll tell you about this one example when i was teaching one swami ji came and he said swami ji i also want to study upanishad and all that i said uh, mahatma ji uh, what were you doing all these years he said i i am a krishna bhakta and i was doing bhagavat katha and all that i said then don't come here continue there only he said no i want to study upanishad i said you will suffer i tell you he said no 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 i'll come and it so happened we were studying uh, kena upanishad and in kena upanishad the mantras come one example i'll give yan manasana manute yena ahur manomatam tadeva brahmatvam vidhi nedam yanidam upasate that is the reality because of which the mind is able to function in its field but the mind cannot comprehend the reality and that reality you are nedam yadidam upasate this ghanti bajao you are doing and doing the puja apoti and doing um, naivedya to the lord giving bath this has nothing to do with the reality after the lecture he came swami ji how can you say like that i said i told you right in the beginning upasana is for the emotional people if you cannot transcend the mind you cannot study the scriptures see friends and therefore mind cover the intellect now after we come to inter- intellect also covers the truth how what is intellect logic everything is logic 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 now we are what is the logic in this uh, cause and effect logic is a false understanding take for example nobody has till date seen sattva rajas tamas three gunas ask any mahatma in the whole universe nobody has seen sattva rajas tamas then why do we talk about it because we look at the world what is the world three things matter inert dynamism activity and knowledge three things then we tell we are told see the matter is because of the tamoguna so tamoguna is the cause and matter is the effect then rajoguna is the cause and activity or dynamism is the effect the sattva guna is the cause and knowledge is the effect so from the effect you have come to the cause so the effect is the cause of the cause or the cause is the cause of the effect anything is mutually dependent is an illusion when father was scolding his son i gave you birth to see this day you behave so wrong way 
the son said, Dad, enough is enough. I heard sufficient from you. Now you listen. Who told you? You gave me birth. The father started shaking. Now what this fellow is going to talk? Then the son said, I gave you birth. When I was not born, who can call you father? So the father is because of the son or the son is because of the father. Reality is man. In this logic, we get lost. And what is the truth? Like uh, Upanishad or Gita says, where it is said, Najayatem Riyateva Vipashit Nayam Bhutva Bhavita Bana Bhuya Ajo Nitya Shashratoyam Purana Nahanyate Hanyamane Sharire. The truth is beyond cause and effect. If the truth is beyond cause and effect, what we have to do? That which is creating the cause and effect, we have to transcend that. How to transcend that? Only one way. We have to find an altar in our life before whom we do not have any argument, any logic, any reason. That is called as total surrender at an altar of reverence. From here, the real devotion begins. Otherwise, we will get lost in cause and effect. We have to go beyond cause and effect. And that is what in devotion it is said, Jehi Biji Rakhya Ram, Tehi Biji Rahi. You don't get disturbed. Why this happened? Hari Icha. You transcend your intellect. Intellect is the biggest hurdle. See, friends, and therefore, you will see those who are only talking Vedanta without devotion in their heart. Upanishad says, Naya matma pravajane na labhyaha na medhaya na bauna shrute na yamai vesha vrunute te na labhyaha tasaisha atma vi vrunute tanum swam. I am atma, this self cannot be gained by listening to satsang or by giving the lectures. Na medhaya, not by remembering so many scriptures. Na bahuna shrutena, we become professional satsangi. No. Then yamai vesha vrunute te na labhya. He who is seeking nothing else but the truth, to the exclusion of everything, to him the truth is revealed. Vivrunate tanum swam. In other words, the truth starts expressing through us. Therefore, I told you yesterday, when Paramatma expresses through a person, he is called as Mahatma. And what will be the expression of Paramatma? No complaint. No demand. See, God realization is defined in Bhagavad Gita in the uh, sixth chapter. Only two things. And this I am telling you as the last thing in your meditation. It is said, Jitatmanaha prashantasya paramatma samahitaha chitoshna sukadukkeshu tatha manapa manayo. In the sixth chapter, this mantra comes. It is said, Shita ushna sukadukkeshu jitatmanaha. Shita Ushna, complementary pairs, cold and heat, joy and sorrows, gain and loss, friend and enemy, achievement and failure, victory and defeat, health and disease, birth and death. These are all complementary to each other. Bhagavan says, when these complementary pairs come and attack us, Jitatmanaha, the equanimity of our mind is not compromised.
And this can be achieved only through wisdom. What is the wisdom? Wisdom is, this world is made up of these complementary pairs. There is nothing in this world with the singular. Nothing. Just imagine, if there is no death, will life have any value? Life is complementary to death. If there is no poverty, riches will have no value. If there is no disease, health will have no value. They complement each other. And this is the fabric of this world. And we imagine, only good things should happen to me. I should be only healthy. I should only succeed. You are going the wrong way. See? Therefore, when we are living in this world, the most important thing is take care of your mind. Live in this world dynamically, happily, cheerfully. But in all these things, see that mind is protected. Now what is the protection of the mind? Before any job is undertaken, during the execution of the job and after the job is done, mind remains clean as a catalytic agent. What is a catalytic agent? That which supports and speeds up any chemical process without itself getting lost in the process. Therefore, what is the meaning of God expressing through us? This is the thing. Gitat manaha shitoshna sukha dukkeshu. If this is what the world is, you cannot complain, for example, day and night. Do we complain about day and night? Oh God, day has come. Oh God, night has come. No, we have to accept it. Whether you want or you don't want. Now, those who accept cheerfully, they are happy. Those who accept miserably, they are miserable. But acceptance is common. No choice. See, friends, again and again, when we thus reflect on this, then we are living in meditation. Shri Toshna Sukhadukheshu Jitatmana. This is how the world is. You have no choice. Then the second step. Manapa mana yoho prashantasya. The world comes to us in the form of these complementary opposites. And people come to us in the form of honor and dishonor. Somebody will respect us somebody will disrespect us. Pain, the respect and the disrespect doesn't disturb the peace of our mind. Both the things disturb the peace of our mind. When we get respect, we start floating in the air. When we don't get the respect, we start burying ourselves in the ground. Prashanta means what? Respect doesn't add anything to us. Disrespect doesn't take anything away from us. We all know Ashanti. Opposite of Ashanti is Shanti. And Prashanti is beyond the two. Ashanti doesn't disturb the Prashanti and the Shanti doesn't add to the Prashanti. See, I'll give an example and conclude. There was one lady, she came and talked to me about her meditation problems and said, Swamiji, uh, please don't give my example in the lecture. I said, okay, I will not give. Then she told me, see, I get up in the morning and uh, by the time uh, I tell everybody, no, I am doing meditation, nobody should disturb me and don't do anything cut-cut in the house. I sit for meditation. 
at that time the water drops drop by drop on the plastic bucket and it makes a noise i get so irritated how many times i told these kids they don't understand by the time thak i check a thing third thak and i get so agitated they don't understand i am doing meditation there should be peace they don't understand what should i do then what happens then suddenly the water stops no tak tak again there is a disturbance pani gaya has the water gone now tell me is this meditation no to get disturbed or not to get disturbed is a choice given to us you refuse to get disturbed an example will make it clear as we listen to satsang exactly the same way listen to the people means what we are heard satsang so many times what difference it made we are the same exactly listen to the world they may say anything continue to be same what you are you are living a spiritual life living in this mode 24/7 is meditation otherwise it quiet and suffer silently no and this can be then lived 24/7 om purnamada purnamidam purnaat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम